Hello, Blender 5.0 just got released. It's a huge update with a ton of cool new stuff, but there's one feature I'm particularly excited about. And it's difficult to explain this with just words, so let me try and demonstrate it for you. Here's my phone. It has an OLED display, and I want to use it to show you an animation I made. So I'm going to lower the exposure of my camera, which will be important later, so we can have a look at this animation on the screen of my phone. You might have seen this animation before, actually. It's a concept I did for a mechanical seven segment display. But what I want you to focus on now is this background color here. This pure white color that is above and below the video playback is white. I've checked it twice, actually. It's 100% white. So would you agree with me that even though our animation here contains some dark areas, some mid tones and some relatively bright highlights, the brightest part of this animation cannot be brighter than this color here because that would make it brighter than white. Now let's get back to the thing I wanted to show you. For this next part to make sense, I need you to remember we're not looking at a screen recording of a phone here, we're looking through my camera that's filming my phone that's playing the animation. And the reason why we have to do it like this is to be able to clearly see the new feature in Blender 5.0 that I'm so excited about, because Blender now allows us to export videos that behave like this. So what we're looking at here is the exact same 3D render, and we're comparing these with identical camera settings with locked exposure, but the video on the right is definitely brighter. In fact, it's even brighter than this white color, and it overwrites the brightness setting on the screen of the phone. This is because Blender 5.0 supports High Dynamic Range Video Export, or HDR, which means that the video file itself has additional metadata that allows our animation to have significantly brighter colors than standard dynamic range video. So to make things easier to understand for my fellow visual learners out there, here's a visualization I made where we can see the actual difference in brightness of my phone screen in three dimensions. So the brighter the pixels in the animation down here, the taller the spikes on the height maps here. And then we can see how far up this goes on the nit scale, which is the physical unit of luminance. And keep in mind that this is a linear scale, so this difference here looks a little bit more dramatic than what it actually feels like in real life. So what this visualization tells us is that if 8-bit sRGB standard dynamic range content is displayed at around 300 nits peak brightness, the 10-bit Rec 2100 high dynamic range video can go all the way up to 1000 nits of peak brightness. And in this demonstration that we've set up here with the iPhone 14 Pro with an OLED display, this particular device's operating system chooses to render the HDR video file brighter than what was supposed to be the white background color in this user interface. And it's not just the Photos app on iPhones that does this, we see this behavior in more and more apps on more and more devices. HDR content can have bright areas that are simply brighter than what was previously considered the white part of the UI. And as a 3D artist, I think this is a really cool technology, because any OLED screen that supports HDR suddenly becomes a super vibrant canvas, where if used correctly, it can really elevate your renders on phones, TVs, tablets, laptops, more and more devices are supporting HDR now. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you exactly how you can export HDR videos from Blender version 5.0, so your 3D animations will be properly tagged with the HDR metadata that is needed for the video file to be processed into beautiful HDR content on platforms like YouTube, Instagram and TikTok. So here we are in Blender version 5.0. I love this splash screen, by the way. And I'm going to open up this project file that I showed you at the beginning, the seven segment display concept. So this is a mechanical clock that goes like this and it's animated and I'm really happy about this project and I think it's a great scene for HDR because of two reasons. First of all, we have these smooth gradients, of the shadows here, and this is going to look amazing with the 10-bit color because there will be no banding almost. And then we have these emissive materials that create these beautiful highlights and the dynamic range in the scene is really high. So <laughs> it is a good scene for high dynamic range video. Okay, so if I were to render this into an HDR video file now, I would not just go to output properties and set the media type to video and render it straight to video. Because if you're rendering through all of this and the render crashes at the very end here, you will lose the entire render. And this render is gonna take many hours to render. So I'm gonna render this out as an image sequence. And do you remember a few years ago when I made this video right here, the EXR workflow? I demonstrated how you can use EXR images to render out your animations without clipping the highlights. And this was all the way back in December, 2021, and the reason why I did this was to future-proof the animation. And the good news is, we are in the future right now. So if you, in 2021, took my advice and you started rendering all your animations in EXR, that means today 
you can re-export your animations into beautiful HDR videos. What a time to be alive. So back in Blender, I'm gonna set my media type to image, not multi-layer EXR. I know it says EXR there and it's tempting, but this is the wrong one. We're gonna go to image, and then you wanna set the file format to EXR. Because we don't need the multi-layer, we just need regular EXR. And then you wanna set the codec to DWAB. And then you can specify the output by clicking on this folder icon. And then I'm just gonna save this to my desktop in a folder here. And then let's just click accept. And now let's go render, render animation. And uh, look at that, I've already rendered this in 2024 actually. So yeah, I don't need to re-render this, I'm just going to use the EXR sequence I rendered back then. Oh, by the way, if you think this project file looks interesting and you want to play around with it, I want to do a quick shout out to my Patreon page where you can subscribe to the Advanced Project File tier. And there you will get a ton of different project files and one of them is this 7 segment display file with this rack and pinion concept. So that is also a great way to support my channel if you want to do that. Okay, so now that we have this folder with all the EXR images, let's export this into an HDR video file. So now we're going to use the new HDR feature in Blender version 5.0. So at the top here, where you can see the workspaces, we want to add a video editing workspace. So let's click this plus icon, add workspace, and let's go to video editing, video editing. And now Blender actually looks like a video editor, which is really cool. So now we can import our footage, but we don't have a timeline yet. So let's click new to create a scene that is our timeline. And by default, this is called scene 001. So I want to rename this and just click on it. I'm just going to call this video export because that's the only thing we'll be doing in this scene. So now to import our image sequence, let's go shift A and I'm going to go image sequence. And then on my desktop, I'm going to open the folder. You can select the first EXR image and then you can press A to select all of them. And then let's just click add image strip. And now you can see this image strip is following your cursor. So I want to go to the playhead to the left here. And you can see it snaps to the playhead, which is really nice. And it doesn't matter what channel you put this on, so I'm just going to put it on channel 3, for example. And you want to make sure you snap this to the playhead on frame 1, so the animation starts right away. And then left-click to confirm. So now if we zoom out there, we can see we have our animation on the timeline. And if you press play, we can see our animation, but there are two problems. First of all, we can see our frame rate is 24 frames per second. This is incorrect. This animation was rendered in 30 frames per second. So let's go to the output properties in the top right corner here. And under format, we can change the frame rate from 24 to 30. So now the frame rate is correct. But the second problem here is that our animation just loops a little after 8 seconds. And it's actually exactly 250 frames. And that is because that is Blender's default frame range. So we need to increase our frame range. And you do this in the bottom right corner by just clicking this end and dragging. And you could eyeball this, but look at that. You can see this last number here on the image sequence. It says 866. That is the number of frames. So if you just set the end frame to 866, press enter. Look at that. Now we have the exact duration, which is really nice. So now we have our entire animation on the timeline and we're ready to export this as an HDR video file. So in the output properties, we want to scroll down to media type and let's change it from image to video. And then we want to go down to encoding. Hang on, let me get some more space here. I'm just going to open it up like this and zoom in a little bit. There we go. And now under encoding, I want to change the container from Matroska to MPEG4. And then the video codec, H.264 is technically possible for HDR, but I recommend to use H.265 or HDVC instead because it's just more efficient. And then the color depth, you want to set this to 10 bit, and then we want to increase our bit rate a little bit. So I'm going to set the output quality to high quality. And don't worry, the video file will still be pretty small. It's just, I think uh, high quality is a really nice uh, default setting. And then if you have audio in your animation, you can go down to audio and let's set the audio codec from no audio to AAC. And then I recommend a bit rate of 256. And speaking of audio, we have just imported the image sequence. We have no audio on our timeline yet. So to import your audio, if you have an audio file, you can go shift A sound and then find your sound file. I have this wave file here. I'm going to use this. I'm just going to click add sound strip. And now you can see once again, we have this strip that is following our cursor. And you want to make sure to place this on frame one like this. So now if we play, we have some sound. Okay, nice. And then let me just see if this syncs up. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so if we were to export this video file now, we would get a 10-bit video file with an H.265 video codec with high quality and sound, but it still wouldn't be HDR. And this is because we need to change our color space and Blender 5.0 will give our video file the correct metadata. And by the way, when I say metadata, I don't mean this metadata. This is something else. 
This is Blender's way of just including some extra data to your render. So you can see the render time, you can see what camera was used, you can see the sample count. It's really cool actually. This was rendered in August 2024 and it was an overnight render because it was rendered like 3 in the morning. Yeah, so this thing that says metadata is not relevant for this HDR workflow. I just wanted to let you know since I'm using the word metadata a lot in this video. So the real metadata we need to change to turn this into an HDR video, we can find that under render properties. And then we scroll all the way down to color management and we want to change our display settings. So by default, it's set to sRGB, but this is what's new in Blender 5.0. We now have this HDR tab here where you can render it out as a REC 2100 HLG file, which is hybrid log gamma, which is an amazing HDR format. And Blender will give us 1000 nits of peak brightness, which is okay. It's a great starting point for HDR. And as soon as we click this, there is one very important rule you need to remember. We can no longer trust what we see in our preview because you can see that it looks completely overexposed. And we have this little note here that says HDR display not supported. And this is because I'm currently recording this tutorial in an 8-bit environment. But look at this. If we lower the exposure, we can see that all the details are still there. This is the magic of EXR. Nothing is overexposed. It's all there. So we're going to leave the exposure at zero. And this will look amazing in HDR. And that's it. Now that we changed our display from sRGB to REC 2100 HLG, by default, our view is set to AGX with the HDR 1000 nits, which is perfect. I think this looks really good. So to export the video file, let's go back to the output properties. And on the output here, I'm just going to click this folder icon. And then I'm just going to save this to my desktop. And then let's just click accept. And now to render this as a video file, let's go render, render animation. And once again, we cannot trust the colors here. Things are looking really wrong on our SDR display, but trust me, this will look really good. And here's a nice trick. You can hold your mouse over the progress bar here and see how much time is remaining. Okay, so now we have our HDR video file on our desktop. It's an MP4 file and we can upload this to YouTube. So I've already gone ahead and done that. So if you press play here, we can see that this video looks really dark. Why does it look so dark? The thing we need to keep in mind here is that not all displays can show an HDR video. So that means that YouTube needed to do an SDR down conversion of our HDR video so that we can look at this SDR video on our SDR display. But if you were to look at this on your phone, it would look exactly like this bright, beautiful animation I showed you on my phone at the beginning of this video. And you might be thinking, isn't there something we can do about this underexposed version? I don't want everyone to look at this incorrect version of my animation. This is too dark. So to fix this problem, we are supposed to make some extra files that contain the color data for the SDR conversion. But I don't want to do that. I'm just going to do something extremely simple, which is not the correct thing to do, but it's just so simple and it just works so well. And I love doing it <laughs> because it's we're cheating, basically. We're, we're going to cheat a little bit. OK, so let me hang. Stay with me here. Since this is a little bit too dark and this is what I would like it to look like. This is the SDR, the truth. If we go back to our blend file here, where we can export the video, if we set this editor type here to properties and we go over to the strip modifiers, don't tell anyone that I'm doing this, and we select our strip. Look at this, we select our strip, add modifier, color balance. And if you set the correction method to offset power slope, and then, <laughs> and then you can take the slope, you can see it's stuck at one. If you just sneak this up a little bit and we make it <laughs> a little bit brighter, just a little bit, maybe we can set it to 1.5. Look at that. It looks absolutely crazy in the preview here, of course. But if we go to our output here without changing anything else, we only added a little bit of brightness to our video strip here. I'm just going to add underscore slope 1.5. And then I'm just going to render it out as a new animation. So what we're doing now is exactly as stupid as it sounds. We're simply making it a little bit brighter. The HDR version, the SDR version, everything just up a little bit. And I've already gone ahead and uploaded this to YouTube. So if we have a look at this, now you can see we have a version of our HDR render that has been down converted to the SDR. But this looks good. It doesn't look underexposed anymore. So by compensating for the loss of exposure in the SDR down conversion and maybe breaking some rules, I think it's OK. I, I'm, I'm happy with this. You probably shouldn't do it if you have skin tones and stuff like that. But for this simple animation with just some lights and mechanical stuff, this is perfectly fine, I think.
So if you are a screenshot type of person, I got you. Here you can see all the settings. So basically you have the color management with the display. This is the important one and the view here. And then in the output properties, you have the video encoding settings, the container MPEG-4, and then it's important that it's H.265 and the 10 bit basically. So with these settings, your video should be properly processed into HDR. And then also just a quick note about this color balance trick and with a slow pair. I think 1.5 is too high. You should probably do 1.3 or 1.4. And also you should only do this if you know that a lot of people will be watching the SDR version of your animation. Because the HDR version will look a lot cleaner and a lot better if you don't do this. So the absolute best HDR settings I've found so far for Blender 5.0 is these settings here. But if you want the SDR to look a little bit brighter and not just completely underexposed, you can do this color balance trick with a slow pair. Oh, and I feel like I should mention, if you're doing a vertical video for Instagram, you can uh, go to the output properties here. You can just swap the resolution of the X and Y axis. So the 1920 becomes 1080 and 1080 becomes 1920. So now you can see you have this vertical frame here, and then that means you should probably render your animation in a vertical format as well. So then you can get proper full screen HDR on Instagram Reels or YouTube Shorts. Yeah, YouTube Shorts actually supports HDR now, which is really cool. But speaking of YouTube, I don't recommend using YouTube for HDR content, actually. It's such a weird and unpredictable process. You can upload the same video file twice, and one of them will get processed in an hour, another one will get processed in two weeks. It's literally complete randomness. So I think my advice right now actually for HDR content is you should make Instagram Reels. It's so much better. Instagram has instant HDR processing. It's insane actually. And also most people that are using Instagram, they are using their phones. So you're almost guaranteed that they will get the HDR version. You don't really need to worry that much about the SDR down conversion. Yes, yeah, so I think making vertical content on Instagram is the best way to make HDR videos if you really want to explore. So if you enjoy watching HDR content, I can recommend checking out my Instagram page because I try to upload some HDR stuff there some from time to time. And I'm having a lot of fun with that. So please uh, follow me there if you want to. So that's it. If you thought this video was valuable, please leave a like. That really helps me out. And subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks for watching.